common questions I get is if I'm a young, healthy athlete with a little bit of high blood pressure, what, what's the best medication to start on? Well, we're going to talk about that. So if you go see your doc, uh, more than likely what they will do is follow the JNC7, Joint National Committee number 7 guidelines on hypertension, which I believe came out, I want to say in 2003. So they've been around for a little while. What JNC7 says essentially is unless you have a what they call a compelling indication, which by compelling indication, they mean congestive heart failure, diabetes, prior heart attack, chronic kidney disease, something like that. Unless you, uh, if you don't have one of those, essentially your option for your first line drug, it's wide open. You can essentially pick from any of the major classes of uh, blood pressure medicines. So these are thiazide diuretics, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors, and ARBs. Any one of those is fine. Although they tend to lean towards thiazide diuretics as first line choice for most people. Now, in my opinion, for young healthy athletes, especially men, uh, a thiazide diuretic is not a great choice. The side effect profile is, uh, is not favorable, um, for those. So what do I like to use? I usually steer men towards ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. And what these drugs do is that they, interact with the renin, um, angiotensin, aldosterone system. I'm not going to get into the mechanism of that. And that's how they lower blood pressure. But the reason I like these drugs, first of all, they have a very favorable side effect profile. Most people have zero issues with these drugs. There's some very rare instances where you can develop a chronic cough, in which case you just stop the drug. Uh, and then there's an even more rare, potentially potentially deadly side effect of lip and mouth swelling called angioedema. I do see that in the emergency room every now and then, but overall it's extraordinarily rare. And these drugs are highly effective at lowering blood pressure, but they have some other really unique properties that uh, I think are of benefit. And they could potentially be of benefit to people that don't even have hypertension. So we know that they improve and help prevent left ventricular hypertrophy, okay, which is unhealthy thickening of the heart. If you have long standing high blood pressure, that can develop. Um, we know that they treat congestive heart failure quite well. They are very much uh, protective of the kidney. So if you have chronic kidney disease, there's a very good chance your doc will put you on an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker. The other thing that they do is that they're anti-inflammatory. And they're particularly anti-inflammatory in the endothelial wall, which is the lining of the blood vessel. So there's some serious potential there to help prevent uh, atherosclerosis and arterial disease. And there's possibly, possibly some data that these drugs have life extension properties. We need a little bit more, more data on that. But, uh, from what I've seen, there, there is some promising data in that regard. So which one do you pick? Well, there's, um, there's not huge differences between all these drugs. There are some differences in half-life. And so really like whichever one that your doc picks, it probably doesn't matter too much. Uh, you know, they may favor one over the other for different reasons. I have one in particular, though, that I really like to use as my first line. Uh, it's an angiotensin receptor blocker. Generic name is Telmasartan. I believe the brand name is Micardis. It's usually dosed at 20 to 40 milligrams a day. And there's a number of reasons why I like this drug. First of all, it has the longest half-life of any of the angiotensin receptor blockers. So you just need to take it once a day. You get a nice steady effect throughout the day. You're not having a rise and a peak in blood pressure. You get a nice steady smooth effect. The side effect profile, like all the drugs in the class, extremely favorable. I, I can't recall in the last 15 years uh, ever having to stop uh, a patient uh, on telmasartan due to side effects. So you get all the benefits of ACE inhibitors and ARBs with telmasartan, but telmasartan has some potentially unique properties that no other blood pressure drug has. Telmasartan interacts with something called the PPAR gamma system in the body. And without getting into all the nitty gritty on that, uh, the PPAR gamma system is involved in insulin resistance, glucose control and weight gain. So there's some potential there that uh, if you have borderline glucose, uh, insulin resistance, uh, etc., that you might get some extra benefits in that regard. There may be some uh, anti-obesity uh, benefits to activating the PPAR gamma system, which um, again, Telmasartan does. And then another effect of activating that system is potentially some performance enhancing benefits, in particular for endurance athletes. So 
I will bet if you polled Olympic athletes and they were honest, I bet you would find a substantial portion of them take telmosartan for purely performance enhancing benefits. It's not currently banned by the IOC, but I'll bet you they have their eye on it um, because there's more and more data coming out that it may actually help in terms of athletic performance. So I take telmosartan myself. I do not have high blood pressure. I take it for its potential life extension properties. I just take 20 milligrams a day. Uh, my blood pressure is perfect. I've been on this medication for over 10 years and never had an issue. So when you go see your doc, if they want to start you on a blood pressure medicine, um, consider talking to them about ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, and in particular, telmosartan. All right, catch you next time. All man medicine video and audio has been created and shared online for informational purposes only. This podcast does not constitute the practice of medicine or professional healthcare services of any kind, including the giving of medical advice. I am not your doctor. No doctor patient relationship has been established. This content is not meant to be a substitute for professional medical advice and should not be relied upon solely for that purpose either. The only purpose of this content is to present peer reviewed research backed health information for your consideration. As always, rely on the advice and guidance of your personal physician before undertaking any activity presented here, and if in doubt or not comfortable with said activity, practice discretion. Your health is your responsibility and not ours. Finally, I take conflicts of interest seriously. I accept no compensation whatsoever from any private corporations, including pharmaceutical or supplement companies. You can trust that if I recommend a medication, product, or service, it's because I genuinely believe in it and not because I'm being paid to endorse it.